Um, I'll wait for that to go. There you go. You're all Perfect. Done. Thanks, Morgan. Um, so this morning we're going to talk about instrumental music and how that applies to your understanding of music as a whole. So uh, the first question in your assignment this, uh, this week is to describe some differences between melodic and harmonic instruments. So let's kind of define the root word for each one of those words. So melodic instruments, what is a melody? We've already talked about this a little bit. The part that you can sing along to. Okay, I would agree with that. A group of notes that are perceived as what? Aesthetically pleasing. Belonging together, aesthetically pleasing. What else? There doesn't have to be anything else, I was just curious. Um, so do me a favor, please sing this right here. Here we go, ready? Beautiful, and I'll sing this part right here. Sing that, yeah. Twinkle, are we still doing that? Okay, so melody is what, typically? Is it a lot of different notes at a, at a time, or is it just, it's just one note at a time? Harmony, on the other hand, is what? More than one note at a time. And typically, harmony does what for the melody? Accompanies or? Like, accents, makes it flow. Makes it flow. So it supports, it supports that melody, okay? So like harmonic harmony. instruments, okay, so let's, sorry, back up. Melodic instruments can only play one note at a time, typically. Right? So the human voice is a melodic instrument, unless you're um, like a Mongolian throat singer that can sing two notes at once. Uh, it's actually kind of cool. You should totally Google it later. I just watched the video on that yesterday. Yeah, it's pretty mind-blowing, right? So these like singers are trained to sing two different notes at once, and it's all about like how to manipulate your vocal cords to make a partial in your own head. Anyways, so it's kind of interesting. So what are some other melodic instruments that we have used in class so far? Recorder. That would be Recorder. So why would you say that's a melodic instrument? Because when like you can play multiple, you can play different notes, but you can only play one note. Like yeah. Right. Well, right. Well, actually, I, multiple holes can be open, and your fingers can do lots of different things at once. But it only one note at a time only sounds. You're exactly right. Yeah, I know where you were coming with that. Sorry. That's fine. Yeah. Oh. So okay. So then that would be one of the ones that can only play one note. Correct. But like what guitar. Some, guitar. What, let's talk about guitar. What yeah. about guitar? More than one note or one note? More than one. Right. So that would be what kind of instrument? Harmonic. Harmonic, not melodic. Okay. okay. What other melodic instruments have we used in here, if any? You're pointing somewhere, Shannon. I'm not sure where you're pointing. I don't know what it's called. Xylophone? Yeah. A xylophone. <laughs> and why would you say that's a melodic instrument? Okay, what would you say it? What would you say? <laughs> is it melodic or harmonic? Harmonic. Harmonic, and why would you say it's harmonic? Because you can play two notes at one time. You can play two notes at one time, but you can also play one note at one time, right? So it's both. Okay. So, so it could be both. Like the piano could be both, the guitar could be both. But typically, we use these instruments over here to accompany what? The voice a lot of the time. So I might consider these harmonic, I mean melodic, or sorry. I might consider these harmonic instruments. But we can also use these to say, we can play this one note at a time, right? Which is the only thing that we've done in here so far. Would every harmonic instrument could also be melodic? Correct. But it can't go the opposite way. Right? Unless you have a group of melodic instruments. And then they would be harmonic. Here's the main difference between harmonic and melodic instruments. It's not how many different notes they can play, it's what their function is, right? So, I mean, a recorder can only be a melodic instrument because it can only play one note at a time. However, the piano could be a melodic instrument. 
But typically, it is a harmonic instrument because it's used to accompany something or support a melody that it's already played. So, harmonic instrument. What other harmonic instruments do we have? We have we said the guitar. What else? Piano, guitar. Drums. Drums. I would not call that melodic or harmonic. Because what? It doesn't have pitch. It doesn't have pitch. Unless it's a pitched drum. Which we do have pitched drums over here. Only one. What would like the tambourine be? Would that be a... That would be a non-pitched percussion instrument. Oh, what's that? Because it doesn't have pitch. All right, so these are tunable drums, all right? You hear it, as I tune it up, it's doing what? What? Tuning. I'm tuning it, I'm making it go where? Higher or lower? Higher because the drum head's getting what? Tighter. Tighter, thank you, okay. So this could be considered a pitched instrument. But this would be what? Probably harmonic to use to accompany something. What about a steel drum? Steel drum? Could be harmonic or melodic depending on its function. So that, that But it would definitely have it definitely has pitch, pitch right? Okay. I would probably say that's a harmonic instrument. Okay. So you look confused. No. Okay, you good? All right. What did you say? Our voice is considered um, melodic. Melodic, because you can only do what with your voice? One. One note at a time, right. And you can divide instruments into those different categories. Uh, your book divides them by function. So, uh, is it able to play a harmony, and does it typically play a harmony? Right? So piano typically does play a harmonic accompaniment. Guitar typically does play harmonic accompaniment. Recorder does not play harmonic accompaniment. So that would be a melodic instrument. What other kind of melodic instruments would you could you think of? We said voice, recorder, what else? Maybe bells, like the glockenspiel or something. You can play more than one note, but typically that would be a melodic instrument, right? What else? The triangle? Triangle. Why would you consider that a melodic instrument? You can only hit it at one time. Okay, you can only hit it one time, good, and it only produces one note. However, how many other notes does it produce? What? What? Like quite a few. Da 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 Unless the melody goes da 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 da. So does that make sense? So this is not a melodic instrument. It's not a harmonic in instrument. This is why it's a percussion instrument, because it, I mean it is tuned to one pitch. But I typically wouldn't be able to play a melody on it. Same thing with those drums over there. I could play a melody on those if I would hit it, retune it really quick, hit it again, retune it really quick, hit it again. But that's why it's part of the percussion. And we'll talk about that here in a second. But you're right. This is pitched, but not really because it only has one pitch associated with it. What about like the little shaker thingies? What about what? Those little like shaker thingies. Um, Would those not even be considered? Do they have a pitch? No. No. So they're not a melodic or harmonic instrument. Okay. okay? Remind me what pitch is again. Like... Pitch is... Okay. <laughs> Um, I'm speaking right now. My voice is at a certain frequency, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, when I sing, my voice is also at a certain frequency. So you can define um, music and sound in the same way, scientifically like that, if you want to. Um, pitch is when there is a note associated with, a specific note associated with something, okay? So there is this right here has one note to it. It's pitched because it, it makes a sound that rings and sustains, and it is, it is a very specific frequency. Okay? So if I sing, twinkle, twinkle, little star, how I wonder what you are, my voice is going where? Up and down. Okay? 
So when I'm speaking, my voice does have inflection to it, and it does go up and down, depending on how excited or what I'm trying to convey and communicate. But when we say pitch in music, it is at a specific frequency. Okay? Anybody else have any other opinions? Does that sound okay? I think. So that's why I say we sing songs and not sing poems, right? Because we're actually doing what with poems? Speaking them, not singing them. There's no pitch associated. Like these right here, there's no pitch associated with these sand blocks. But they still make music if I want them to. So these are non-pitched percussion instruments. So non-pitched means there's no pitch associated with them. These are, the xylophones are pitched percussion instruments. Because if I hit a C, I know that a C will come out. Okay? Does that make it easier for you to understand? Okay, cool. All right, so that being said, let's talk a little bit more about instruments. Oh, gosh, I'm going to die. Okay. <laughs> Maybe not die, but I might break something, which would be awful. I've lost my key to this room, and it's been like a very weird morning, so. All right. Let's get this wonderful whiteboard out here. Is this in the frame, Morgan? Um, uh, yep. Cool. All right. So typically, instruments are divided into four different categories or families. All right? And I would like for you to please remember this. Instruments are categorized into these different families, not by what they are made of, not by the material that they are made of, but how they actually produce sound. Okay, let me say that one more time in a different way. Instruments are put into families by how they make sound, not the material that they are made out of. Could also be like the mouthpiece that they use. Uh, we'll talk about that in just one second, but yes, yes, or lack of mouthpiece, right? Right. Okay. So, for example, a saxophone and a trumpet are made out of the exact same material, but they are not in the same instrument family because they do not produce sound in the same way. Okay? So name, Morgan, name me an instrument. Um, like clarinet. <coughs> clarinet, wonderful, I love it. So the clarinet, does anybody know what part of, what family that is in? Woodwinds. Woodwinds. Okay, so is the clarinet part of the woodland family because it's typically made out of wood? No, no it is not. Okay, so what happens in a clarinet is that you have a mouthpiece, and there's a piece of wood that is very thin made out of bamboo, that attaches to that mouthpiece. Okay? I blow across that piece of bamboo, that bamboo vibrates to create sound. So I'm blowing across a surface to create sound out of that instrument. Any instrument that blows across a surface to create sound is part of the woodland family. Okay? Let me say that again. Any kind of instrument that blows across a surface to create sound is part of the woodland family. Name some other woodland instruments. Flute. Saxophone, flute, clarinet, piccolo. piccolo. Is there a recorder one? Recorder. Why would that be part? Why would that be because one? Because you're like blowing. Blowing across a surface across. to create sound, okay. right? Oboe. Oboe. Bassoon. Bassoon. Okay. So now we're talking about. So we have got woodwinds up here. Oh my gosh. <laughs> All right. And flutes, right? They blow across an aperture or a hole to create sound. Same thing with the recorder. You know how that like whistle part of the recorder is like inside of the recorder? You're blowing across that to create that sound. So then we're talking about single reed. Single reed instruments, which only have one piece of bamboo to blow across, like the clarinet or saxophone. Okay. Has anybody seen somebody pick a blade of grass up and put it in between their fingers and blow across that to make a sound? 
That's also a woodwind instrument, right? <laughs> yeah? And then we also have double reed instruments. So there's two pieces of wood that you blow into, and they vibrate together to make a sound. This is like the oboe or the bassoon, all right? So this is saxophone, clarinet, this is oboe, bassoon, you also have English horn there, that sort of thing. Name some other instruments that are not part of the Woodman family. Piano. What? Piano. Piano. We're going to save that one for last. Okay. That are not part of it? That are not part of the Woodman family. Trumpet. Trumpet. Okay. So that is part of the brass family. Is that because it's made out of brass? No. No. Okay. What? <laughs> yeah. So... The reason that it's part of the brass family is because brass, all brass instruments are basically just like a pipe that's bent, and they have keys that you push down to make that pipe longer or shorter. The same thing with any of these instruments up here, we'll talk about that. So, but at the end of that pipe, you have like a metal cup that goes into the pipe, all right, shaped like this, all right, and you put your mouth against it, and you buzz your lips into it to create sound. Depending on how big the pipe is, and how big the mouthpiece is, or small the mouthpiece is, and how fast or how slow you buzz your lips, makes it higher or lower. But any instrument that you have to buzz your lips into to produce sound is part of the brass family. Name some brass instruments. We already said trumpet. Trombone. Trumpet. Trombone. Baritone. Baritone. Tuba. Tuba. French horn. What else? What's terrifying? Tubas. Tubas. Why are they terrifying? I don't know. I just I had a fear in high school of marching band and falling in a tuba. Falling in a tuba and getting lost, yeah. <laughs> so, um, what's the difference between a trumpet and a tuba? Size. Size. What else? What 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 size are you talking about? The tuba is more of the bass. Okay, so the tube, the actual pipe is longer. Mm -hmm. What else is different? The opening? Yeah, the bore of, okay, how big around that opening is, or the pipe is. That's called the bore. How big the bore is. B-O-R-E, not B-O-A-R. There's no like tusks that come out. There's no like wild boars that you go hunting for in the tuba. So, um, there's also, you've heard of the cornet before, right? The cornet, that's the same thing as a trumpet, except for what? Where did you do this, like this, Gabby? It's a little smaller. Is it? It's like, it's kind of more compact. There's less pipe. There is, actually it's almost the same amount of pipe. It's just a little bit less. A little bit less. Also, the, the bore is completely yeah, different. It's just so the trumpet, the bore is the same way throughout the entire thing. So the pipe is the same length, no matter how many twists and turns it takes. The cornet actually goes from small to bigger. Not a lot, but it does go, it gets bigger as it goes around. Okay. This fun fact for the what day. What about, sorry, <coughs> the trumpet that they blow it to you and it just doesn't okay. have any, like, buttons. Okay, it doesn't. All right, so that's called a bugle. All right, and I'm glad you brought that up. So that is the precursor to the trumpet. All right, so you know how I said that, like, brass instruments are made of pipe, right? Think of it that way, and that the way that they made it, when you push keys down, Liz, it shortens or lengthens the pipe. Whenever we shorten an instrument, what happens? It gets higher. It gets higher. Whenever we lengthen, it does what? It gets lower. It gets lower. Okay, that's the same premise for anything up here. Saxophone. The more buttons we push down, the lower it gets, because the pipe is now what? Longer. Same thing on the recorder. The more fingers we put down, the longer that recorder gets. Okay. For brass instruments, remember how I told you that it depends on not only the length of the pipe, but how fast or how slow you buzz your lips? That's, the, that's how it gets higher and lower. So they're only able to play a few different kinds of notes if they don't have any keys. And it's called different partials. So you can like not push any fingers down on a trumpet and it turns into a bugle. Okay? For the most part. 
and I think it's like a fifth. Right. You know, play. So it's going like you can't play chromatic notes. Okay. Like on the piano, you can play. Half steps. So on a bugle, you can only play like thirds, fifths, and I think some whole steps, okay? Because you don't have the ability to manipulate that pipe length as much. So, does that answer your question? Mm -hmm. Okay. So, what other instruments do we have that we haven't talked about yet? Guitar. Guitar! Good. How do you produce the sound on a guitar? You strum the strings. Yeah, you strum the strings. Okay. I'll take that. So, let's talk a little bit about the string family here. So I can strum strings. Wow, I cannot spell today. Or write, maybe that's it. I can strum strings. What else can I do to produce sound on stringed instruments? Pluck. Pluck. What else? With the bar, I don't know. Okay, so everyone's going like this, right? It's, this is called bowing. This is a bow, and you bow strings to produce sound. What else? Strum, pluck, bow. Hit, sort of. Do I really hit them to make a sound? No. But it, well, you can. I sort of. Like is a that, guitar, it's not a good sound. It's not a good sound. What? Oh, what? Okay, we'll talk about that in a second. Well, you asked. Yeah, no, I did. So anything that I can pluck, strum, bow, or what else did I say? Pick. That was the other one that I was looking for. So I can pick those different strings, right? What kind of instruments would fall into the string family? What's the difference between pluck and pick? What? Pluck is when I literally go underneath the string and pluck it. So I'm plucking a um, harp, OK? Or I can strum a harp with my fingertips. Or with a pick, you actually have an instrument that you use to manipulate that. It's a lot harder, more distinct sound. Um, Aaron, throw me that guitar back there. It's in that box. Throw it? Yeah, just throw me that guitar. Check it. Perfect, thank you. Oh, snazzy guitar. Right, this is even in tune. That is yellow. <laughs> sort of, yeah. So I could strum. Okay, or I could pluck the strings. This is not a chant. Or I could pick them. I don't have a pick with me, but I can use the edge of my finger now. That's ugly, sorry. There you go. Thank you. I could play you uh, a song, but I don't have my strap with me to go around my body, so I can hold it. I'm a really good guitar player. Um, I'm having to learn how to play guitar for my music therapy classes. It's been the bane of my existence this semester, but it's getting better. Okay. You play the ukulele. What? You play the ukulele? I play the That's cute. That's great. I can't play any string instruments. So name some, name some string instruments. We have the guitar. Banjo. Banjo. Violin. Violin. What else? Cello. Cello. Harp, viola, what else? Bass. Bass. So do you see this violin, viola, cello, bass? Those are the four different string instruments in a string orchestra, right? For the most part. What is the difference between a violin and a bass? Size. Okay, so it is bigger. What's the main difference between the violin and the bass? Uh, actually, basses do bow a lot in an orchestra. Yeah. Between a what and a bass? Between a violin and a bass. What's the main difference between a violin and a bass? Would be the opening. Not the opening. The strings. What, what about the strings? Is there more? They are thicker. The length of the strings and how thick they are. Oh. Okay. Right. Mm -hmm. So basically, the the bass is just a really big violin. Yeah. Yeah. The strings are what? Thicker and much longer, okay? That's really important. I can't play as low on the violin as I can on the bass because the strings aren't long enough. That's the whole premise of how instruments work. Okay, we haven't talked about one other family, which is what? Percussion. Percussion. 
So, how do you produce sound with percussion instruments? Strike it. You can strike it. You ha can hit it. What else? You can tap it. You can shake it. You can tap it. Like strike it. Strike, hit, no. shake. What else? Slap. Slap. I don't know. Tap. Kick. That's what looks like that. Okay. <laughs> like a little broom when you go shh. Uh huh. Oh, that, like that. That's what. <laughs> you can sure uh -huh. you can what? Scratch You're shaking. You can scratch it. You can oh. rub them together, right? Like the sandbox that I just played. Hit together. Hit together, right? We just said hit. Yeah. Oh. So. Anything typically that you can strike, hit, or um, shake to produce sound is part of the percussion family. You can have pitched percussion, like we talked about earlier, or non-pitched percussion. Pitched percussion actually can play a melody. Non-pitched percussion cannot play a melody. So this brings us to this wonderful instrument right here. <laughs> What is this? Piano. Good. <laughs> Percussion or string? Both. 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 Why would you say both? Because it has strings on the inside. You can hit it, but it hits strings. Okay. Piano, percussion or string, watch. There are felt hammers on the string right now that are pushing against the string, okay? Whenever I push a note down or a key down, a hammer comes up and hits the string and this dampener goes away. And then it goes right back. So it's like this, all the time. It's like really amazing backup dancers, right? Um, <laughs> down here operate those other hammers that you can't really see move. So we have felt hammers that rest against the string all the time, and they come off the string when the hammer hits it, and they go back as soon as it hits it. So that's why I can have... So it can sound like this, or I can push this pedal down, and those felt dampeners come off, and it sustains that note. And I let off the pedal, and the felt hammer pushes back, I mean, the felt dampener pushes back against the string to deaden the sound. So, what is the primary mode of sound production here? Striking what? String. Strings. So, what is striking a string? A hammer, a felt hammer. This is why I consider the piano part of the percussion family and not the strings. Because while it does strike strings, right, that's not how it produces sound. It produces sound by doing what? Hitting. And we've already determined that that is part of the percussion family. Okay. You can make a sound argument for both. All right? You don't agree with me, do you? No, I don't. Why don't you agree with me? Because the string is what is making the vibration, the vibration. which is what you yeah. hear. I okay. haven't been told that it was string. Really? Yeah. Okay. I'm telling you it's part of percussion. Do you want to say that? It's like <laughs> What is it? Yeah. Uh, it might, but you can make a strong argument for either one. I'm not saying either one is incorrect. Honestly, anything like this really needs its own kind of instrument family called keyboard. Truly. Yeah. Um, but a keyboard doesn't use strings, does it? Right? Keyboard family, I just mean like, I mean like it's electric, yeah. When I say keyboard, I mean anything that looks like this. Okay. So like uh, a harpsichord, a piano, what? Um, what? So I was just going to say, okay, no, what is something that they created, what was the precursor to piano? Uh, Clavinova or harpsichord. And was that considered progression? Yeah. Okay, so that, there's no debate about it. It could be considered keyboard, too. Or string. Like organ. Is that what those things in the churches are called? Yes, okay, an organ is different than, it's not a percussion instrument. It has pipes. It has pipes. So it's actually considered a woodwind instrument because the keys are just manipulating how fast and slow the air moves through a pipe. Okay. So it's a woodwind, not a brass. But yeah, I thought it would be a brass because of the tubes. 
Well, the tubes can be made out of wood. They don't have to have tubes at all. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. This right here, I consider it part of the percussion family because the way it produces sound. Like, I could pluck, strum, or uh, pick these strings in here if I wanted to, and that would be part of the string family. For me, I have to strike something to get sound out of it. So that is why I consider it part of the percussion family. And you can make a strong argument for either one. Just think about it. So, what do you think it is? I think it's a string instrument. You think it's a string instrument? Why? Well, it's just because I've been thinking about it since I was baby, and we're like, oh, this is a string instrument. Hmm. I'm like, okay. Interesting. <laughs> yeah. I also took for, like, piano lessons since I was a kid. So, and it was just like... That's just what they told me on, like, the I'll first day. Yeah. It's like we found out Santa Claus doesn't exist right now. <laughs> what is it? Not a deal right now. <laughs> so, just another way to think about it. I know. Okay? You're not going to be tested on it. Everything you've been told is a lie. You've been lying. I'm sorry. I can see how it could be the first Okay, so name some percussion instruments. We're not going to include the piano there, I guess. <laughs> Oh my god. Oh, we all know Wikipedia is <laughs> true, right? <laughs> oh, the best Except they only say percussion twice in the article, but they say strings 103 times. I've been told by What is it? It talks more about the strings of the element, but yeah. it does say, despite the fact that this piano has strings, it's usually classified as a percussion instrument because the strings are struck rather than plucked. As with the harps or quarter spin yet. Yeah. Spin yet. Okay. So thank you, Wikipedia. <laughs> So I'll get on that. You can get on there and change it later if you don't agree with that. Okay. So, yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. So uh, let's move on now. Percussion instruments. We have like drums, um, non-pitched percussion, like any of these little like cool little instruments over here. Non-pitched percussion. Tambourine. Like, tambourine. Hand drum. Wait, what's uh, that? I'm trying to find my favorite non-pitched percussion instrument that I can't. What's that instrument in sleigh ride that they? hit together that it's a slapstick slapstick oh. so, this is called a flexitone it's my favorite non pitch percussion instrument it's just fun okay that's all. A xylophone. xylophone is a pitch percussion instrument okay so but it is, it is considered a percussion instrument there's another one that's pretty big it's like a bigger xylophone marimba yeah it. yeah okay so let's move on from instrument families and let's talk a little bit about percussion specifically. So your book describes different ways to lead students in percussion activities. So what's one of the first steps in that uh, kind of process? Okay, so I wouldn't teach them how to play it, but I would definitely do what first? Introduce them to it, show it to them, and then I might go where? I could demonstrate. More than likely, I probably would not do that you, you in this should, class. You what? should describe it a little bit first. Okay, so maybe we could describe it. Maybe we could predict how that would be played. What else? The use for it. Okay, so we could talk about the use for it, maybe later on. But what do I want? What's one of the key things that we talk about in here all the time? Like every single day, I hope. Experiential, Experiential learning. Okay. So Let them explore that instrument and then describe how to play it correctly. You can go about it either way. And I think your book says demonstrate for them. I would much rather you let them experience that instrument first and then kind of put a label on it later. Kind of like what we did with the recorder. That was my next example. Yeah. So I said figure out a way to play this as many different ways as you possibly can. Right? And then I'll tell you how to play it correctly. That's, that has a twofold purpose. First of all, it gets kind of like bad technique out of the way, so you can say that's not how it's done, right? Secondly, it provides them a point of reference for them to refer to later. It's like bridging that knowledge from what they know to what they need to know, it's activating the prior knowledge, or I'm building prior knowledge before I try to teach something new, based upon their own personal experience, which is why we call it experiential learning. What are some other things that I could do that would, would make sense if I was leading some kind of percussion activity? So I've given them a chance to explore it, we've labeled it, then what has to happen? Are you saying we haven't demonstrated it yet? I mean, we've done it in other ways. Well, they need to know about the 
um, the notes that you, you know they need to know about like the the scale and stuff like that. Do they already know that at this point? Let's let's for argument's sake, let's not talk about pitch percussion. Okay. Let's talk about if I was leading a drum circle with no pitches <clears throat> assigned to it. You don't even dance. Okay, so I would have them experience it, but before that, what would I have them do? Every student needs to do what? Try it. Try it, okay? So it would definitely facilitate an activity where every student could play every, every single instrument in some way. I wouldn't say, Natalie, you play the hand drum, Skylar, you play like the tubanos, Gabby, you play the flexitone, and that's it. Yeah, you get my favorite, right? Yeah. So um, I would make sure that every student has the opportunity to explore and experience each one of the instruments. And then I can start putting it together in some kind of activity where we can include like a song or a movement activity or something like that. So your book does a nice job describing kind of some guidelines for that, but those are my guidelines that I like to go by. So you can use either one, but just know that one of my big things as a teacher is to um, facilitate class in such a way that uh, students are building experience so we can teach more like more difficult concepts and they have a point of reference to go by. Yeah, I know like um, whenever we were doing the whatever those things called. Xylophones. Yeah, xylophones. Um, like I really liked how everyone got to like play. Like we had like person one and person two. Like that helped me a lot. Like, and why do you think I would do pair pairs? So that it's easier and it goes by faster. Okay, well it's like, easier, everyone gets a turn. What's my primary reason for doing that? Natalie? So it's like a self-assessment tool. So like if Natalie's totally getting it and you're having like your own struggle bus, right Sarah? Mm -hmm. And like Natalie can be like, oh here's how I do it, maybe this will help. Mm -hmm. Without me as a teacher saying like, Sarah, you know, you know you're on the struggle yeah. bus, yeah. you know, you might want to try it this way and calling you out in front of everybody. Yeah. I do all kinds of group work with music making in my music classroom. Yeah. Uh, music making is a, an experience. It is a group activity. Yeah, I just thought um, that's fun because I wouldn't think to do it like I didn't think you would be able to incorporate a way to have everyone play. Like, right. So the better way to do that is to, and like also with these instruments, it's really easy to teach everyone the same part. And it doesn't matter the size of the instrument, they're still getting that same musical experience. And then I can layer in different things later. So that's another big thing. Like I really like the way that you all, when you taught your um, rhythmic poem, <coughs> how if some, some of you did an ostinato accompaniment, right? Okay, and I like the way that you had your like students switch so they can have all of the experience, the whole experience of both doing the ostinato and doing the poem and then switching so that they can share, okay? So uh, your book has a really nice kind of guideline for that. Uh, the last question on your homework assignment that's due on Wednesday at 9 o'clock, right, is about transposition of different songs. When I say that we're singing in tune, it means we're singing the same note at the same time with basically the correct vowel shape, right? Sing this with me. Twinkle, twinkle, here we go. Twinkle, twinkle, little star, how I wonder what you are. Good. So, if I were teaching, I'll sing it again. Here we go. Sing it right here first. Here we go. doing this, what do you mean, Gabby? Moving I'm moving it around to different keys, okay? That's what transposition Yeah, I'm moving it around to different keys. Yeah. And the reason why I would transpose a song, what do you think, Elizabeth? Why do you think I would do that? Oh. Yeah, so lower or higher, right. So for adults, I would probably change it into a little bit lower key. But if I'm teaching a school of like, I mean a class of pre-K, kindergartners, first graders, you learned last week that their voice ranges are very small, right? They're very, very, very tiny. So only about a fifth. So I'd probably keep that in the key of D. Versus down here, so maybe some of you all would be more comfortable singing. So, 
transposition of keys or songs makes it easier sometimes for students to sing. I would never want to have a song that's too low or too high for my students because they would strain their voices either way. Okay. So, let's talk a little bit about, and Morgan, you can hit the stop button for me. 